Be Wealthy and Smart, episode number 243. Step into a world of wealth and financial freedom without budgets, boredom or bosses on Be Wealthy and Smart. And now, here's your host, Linda P. Jones. Welcome to Be Wealthy and Smart. I'm Linda P. Jones, America's Wealth Mentor, empowering women and men worldwide to financial freedom. On today's show, I'm going to deal with an unusual financial question. But before we get started, I want to tell you about another awesome podcast called Profit Boss Radio. Profit Boss Radio is hosted by MBA and certified planner Hilary Hendershot, who highlights inspiring women who have created success in their financial and professional lives. Each week, you can tune in and hear how women have paved the road to sustained success with both beliefs and actions. Check it out at ProfitBossRadio.com. So this is a little bit of a different podcast. It's not the typical financial question that you might have heard on other podcasts about emergency funds, for example. Emergency funds have been talked about ad nauseum, I think. And of course, everyone knows they need to have money set aside for an emergency like car repairs or unexpected dental or medical emergencies, things like that. And pretty much everybody knows that you need to have three to six months savings set aside for those kinds of emergencies. But there is a different kind of emergency that a lot of people don't talk about, but actually I do. And it came up recently that it paid off for someone who followed my advice. And here was the email I got. Linda, I had an unexpected trial run of what it would be like if the banks were shut down. My car was broken into and my purse was stolen with my credit cards and checkbook. I had to shut down all my accounts on a Friday. If it hadn't been for the emergency cash that you've been recommending for some time, I wouldn't have been able to get my car repaired, the locks changed on my house, my driver's license replaced, medications filled, groceries, gas, etc. Because of fraud and identity theft, there's no temporary cards or checks or replacements done online. It takes a week to get replacement cards and checks. My passport and birth certificate became my lifelines, and thank goodness we're not in the purse. I am fortunate in that I could have used my business accounts in a pinch, but what if those had been unavailable too? Thank you so much. Signed, Marie. Well, Marie, I'm so glad that you followed my advice and that you kept emergency cash on hand, which is different from your emergency funds. Because as you found out, it's not enough to have money in the bank. Sometimes you have to have money on hand and kept in your home. And I think that is something that we have to distinguish between an emergency fund and emergency cash. Because I think everybody gets why you need to have an emergency fund, but not everyone understands why you need to have emergency cash. And the reason you have to have emergency cash is because there's real electronic threats besides what you described, Marie, and having your purse stolen. There's real electronic threats online that also can come into play. These are things like the ATM going down and not being available, which, by the way, has happened many times and just recently happened in England where ATMs were not available for a period of time. I think it was a little longer than a day. We also last year had that DDoS internet attack, which was a broad part of the internet that was brought down and was not accessible by people. So that meant some people's bank accounts weren't accessible, etc., And we've also had talk of someday an electromagnetic pulse happening, which is a flare from the sun, which might take down the grid. And again, not give us access to the internet, to electricity, to even phones, etc. And first of all, I hope these things never happen. But you always have to plan for the worst and hope for the best. 
And so I do recommend that people keep emergency cash on hand. Now, your next question is going to be, well, how much? And of course, there's no exact right number, but here's sort of how I rationalize what you're going to need. If we had some kind of an outage of the internet or ATMs or both, you probably would want grocery money, you'd want money to have gasoline in your car, you'd want money to go to a restaurant to buy supplies, maybe get medications at the drugstore. These are normal things that we go through over the course of a month very quickly. We go through some of these items. And so you'd want to be able to go out and get more of those items. But maybe you need to have enough cash on hand that you could get those items for maybe a few months. So I think that a good rule of thumb is to say whatever your budget is that you spend in a month, let's say you spend $10,000 a month. If you spend $10,000 a month, you'd want to have $3,000 cash on hand. Now, again, that's just a rule of thumb that I've kind of logically come up with. So if you if your expenses are $1,000 a month, you'd want $300 on hand. Uh, you just need to have enough cash that will cover groceries, incidentals, gasoline, things like that. And so I think it's safe to say about 30% of one month's expenses would be the amount of cash, literal cash, that you want to go to the bank and have hidden somewhere in your home, preferably not in your bedroom. And um, so you want to also not tell people that it's there unless it's your spouse. Uh, but you typically want to put this in a safe hiding place that people are generally not going to run across. So this is something important for you to think about, to do, and to just set aside in case of some kind of outside incident where maybe even your purse is stolen like Marie's was, but for some reason, certain things can happen where it's important for you to have cash on hand. If you haven't yet subscribed to Be Wealthy and Smart, hit the subscribe button and you'll get immediate knowledge of when new podcasts are uploaded. And I'd love to have a review from you on iTunes or Stitcher Radio. It means so much to me and it really helps people find the show. It's super important that you leave a review. And if you want to get your net worth moving in the right direction toward financial freedom, go to my website at lindapjones.com and get your 11 quick financial tips to boost your wealth. This is a little report I put together. It's a quick one pager of 11 things you can do that are so easy that will get your wealth moving in the right direction and make a huge impact for you positively. That's all for today. Until next time, live the good life and be wealthy and smart. Thank you for listening to Be Wealthy and Smart with Linda P. Jones. Share the wealth and tell your family and friends about the show. Check out our website, blog, and social media for more riches at www.bewealthyandsmart.com.